In a quiet residential area of Overland Park, Kansas, we see a nice home as a detached garage. Artist Terry Evans was looking for a place about 15 years ago, and here it is. It was move-in ready. Terry has been busy ever since creating his amazing bandsaw boxes. And inside the walls of this nondescript garage come some stunning pieces of art. And today we're going to take a look. Hi, Terry. Thanks for letting us come in. Thanks. Yeah, how are you doing, man? I, I'm doing great. Uh, man, uh, a detached garage, how do you describe that as your workspace? I mean, how did that come about? Well, it's uh, in my history of working, it's the fourth space I've worked in. I started out in a five by 12, um, closed in a front porch, built a custom shop, worked there for a number of years. And then we, uh, I moved teaching assignments to a different city. And for um, 18 or so years, I worked in an attached garage. And um, well, leaving a teaching assignment, moving into full-time woodworking, it was a mutual decision with my wife and myself that more work would mean more dust, so we needed to have a detached garage. So um, we we moved about uh, eight or nine miles away from our former house and found this space with a detached garage. It was built in the mid '80s for a hobby mechanic shop, and uh, uh, wasn't ideal, but it had uh, you know two bays, two parking bays worth of space, and. Uh, that was adequate for me. I'd worked in smaller spaces before, so we moved in and set it up. Uh, and I still was teaching. When, you, when you're working, it, it looks like you're no more than a couple steps from any from anything. No, uh, since my work has never been really large, I don't need a lot of space to move the projects around. Um, so I have the benches set up. Um, pretty much where I can have a series of 10 or 12 pieces within arm's reach because I'm repeating a process through a little bit of mass production on them in many cases, either sawing out the boxes or uh, 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 sanding them. So the most efficient way is to work on a series at a time and keep them close to the workspace. Within the field of woodworking or wood art, how would you describe your work? Well, bandsaw box making is really uh, a broad category with a lot of different um, techniques that are employed. I've kind of invented mine and I use a wide range of hardwoods, uh, very colorful, a lot of different grains, burls, different looks to them. And uh, I'm laminating to get them together for maximum impact in terms of contrast and color, different woods together. Uh, I'm using veneers, both natural and dyed veneers, as well as a wide range of different colors of wood. And um, the piece you see clamped up in the video here uh, is cleaned, finished, and clamped. It's a lot cleaner than it would look in the process. There's lots of glue squeezing out of the crack, so the handful of pieces you see prepared here have had all of the excess glue removed and are at various stages of becoming boxes. So, so you're laminating all of these pieces together. I am. And by laminating, I mean gluing. And I have to select um, the proper glue for each wood. There are a few woods. Uh, some of the uh, tropical forest woods have a lot of oils in them. So they re may require a different type of glue than some of the other woods. Requires a great deal of pressure and um making that pressure even across the stack of woods to get them to glue together without any glue seam showing. What I was noticing, you seem to work with woods of various thicknesses. Is that something that's uh, commonly available or? It, it's typically not. You can buy them, but you pay a premium uh, for the processing charges. So um, I buy veneers, which are they're used at their full thickness and they have some variation in thickness, but for the rest of my wood, say from a fourth of an inch thick on up to an inch in thickness, I'm typically working with dimensional lumber and I'm resawing a lot of lumber. And um, I have an illustration where I'm showing uh, the resawing process. A lot of wood shops will have a resawing bandsaw 
and I've used those in the past, but for my application, I've found that using a table saw with a thin curved blade is just as efficient um, because I'm typically working with woods that are no wider than between three and five inches. So I can achieve that, that uh, resawing on a table saw and really control it so I have less loss of wood. And using a thin curved blade um, puts a less, less of a load on the motor and removes just a little bit less wood. So theoretically, I'm ending up with a little bit more wood left to use and less wood left in sawdust on the floor. So here I'm taking about an inch cut each time and I flip it over and take that cut from each side, raise the blade a little bit and then repeat the process. And for a three or four inch wide board, that's adequate to uh, get it cut all the way through. And uh, in preparing the stock, I can spend a whole day just preparing that stock and building up an inventory to work from. So. Is there a lot of uh, sanding involved in making your bandsaw boxes? And are there any special tools that help you achieve that unique look that you get? Yeah, I, I use a couple of tools that are often used in uh, workshops. A 12 inch disc sander is a standard tool that people have around just to uh, remove stock, smooth over a surface. And uh, I use that for a number of purposes. And uh, the next tool you see is an inflatable drum sander. That's probably the most unusual tool I have in the shop. Uh, it, it's not rare, but most wood shops are going to want a perfect profile. So if they're doing uh, interior work or uh, joinery work, they're probably not gonna want to use an inflatable sander. It leaves a very organic look. And I typically sand every piece through about four grits on the, on the inflatable drum. And that's uh, ending at uh, 320 grit for the final finish. Then the last sander in my shop is a oscillating spindle sander and it's pretty indispensable for one particular purpose, and that's for finishing interior spaces or concave surfaces and uh, interiors of boxes. So there's no tool that's gonna do that quite the way a spindle sander will do. Is your work limited to boxes and vessels? No, I've made um, jewelry from the, from the very beginning, actually. Um, my very first uh, foray into art shows was as a leathersmith, and that eventually evolved into making wood inlaid buckles. So I've been doing wood inlaid jewelry for a long time, and currently um, our only real specialty in jewelry are inlaid wood earrings. And uh, the jeering for art fairs is somewhat complicated, so I don't really show earrings very often at art fairs but uh, I have made them available on a Facebook page and I have a really good inventory of them. We work in a little landscape style where you can hang a crescent moon setting through a black sky or uh, a lot of different geometric pieces, uh, which are kind of art deco or so. And uh, I've developed that process uh, over the years, abandoned it for 10 or 12 years and then recently have come back to making it. And something that we make available at a good price. So. Uh, Terry, how long have you been doing the art fairs? You know, um, I was invited to participate in an art fair by my college professor. Uh, it was after my junior year of college and we traveled to art fairs in, uh, in the Midwest. And um, it was in 1972. So I think uh, the math means if we had art shows this year, I'd be starting my 48th year of doing art shows. Uh, and during that time, I had one hiatus of, uh, of one year where I changed teaching jobs and it took me quite a while to get a new shop up and running. Uh, but other, other than that one year, I've been actively doing art shows uh, since 1972. Is it hard for you not being on the road right now and seeing your customers at the art fairs all over the country? You know, um, I'm very hopeful that other forms of marketing will replace it. 
Uh, I think one of the things that's starting to make all of us realize is how much money we're not spending doing art fairs because the booth fees and the, the expenses of hotels and traveling, uh, I actually have a vehicle sitting in my garage. I'm wondering how long I need to keep it because it's still loaded with an art fair booth. Uh, so I'm kind of relaxed about it, but that also relates to my age uh, and the fact that we knew that for us, art fairs were going to come to an end within three or four or five years anyway. Uh, so we had narrowed it down to a handful of art shows in uh, Kansas City, uh, Denver, Fort Worth, that are the shows that we really wanted to do. Uh, so unlike artists who are younger than me, I don't feel like I'm being robbed of a lifestyle. It's kind of coming along at a convenient time. Uh, but we do miss seeing people because we have our own uh, family of artists that we're, uh, almost every artist will tell you they have a dozen or two dozen really close dear friends they may only see once every year, but we really appreciate, because uh, we have so much in common. They're, you know, just in normal social life, we don't encounter people who are empathetic to what the lifestyle involves. When you're on the street at an art fair, you realize the public has no idea that everything that occupies a 10 by 10 space we carried with us. So yeah, I miss it. I miss the people, but we will persevere and figure out a way to keep making art. Terry, before we let you go, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Well, I've tried to make my website uh, memorable. I'm Terry Evans Wood Art. And I've recently um, established a Facebook page with earrings that simply is called Wooden Earrings. Uh, so you could search that on Facebook. I think uh, we may be including a link on the video or on the uh, behind the scenes site. Uh, but uh, th those would be the two best ways to start contacting me. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for taking some time out and visiting with us, and uh, we wish you all the best. Ned, thank you so much. It's been great. Uh, I hope people out there are, are entertained by seeing what it takes to become an art show artist. Thanks so much. Thank you, and uh, we thank you for visiting with us today, and we want you to come back and see some of the other artists on our Thomas William Furniture Virtual Art Fair behind the scenes. We invite you to check out these other artists on the site.